Welcome to Now in the 90s, where we look at the game releases of 30 years ago today. This week, we're looking at a D&D game, a Neo Geo shoot 'em up with a bizarre release history, and a Game Boy Racer. I'm your host, Jared, and today is July 22nd, 1992. We've already had an NES D&D game come out this year, so how about another one? Released this week in 1992 is Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Dragon Strike for the NES. Unlike the other D&D games, this one puts the emphasis on dragons because you play as them. Upon the start, you can choose from one of three different metallic dragons, bronze, silver, or gold, each with their own stats. Gameplay is a top-down shooter where you fly your dragon and using its two different breath attacks to take out enemies. Unlike typical top-down shooters though, this isn't a shoot 'em up in which the screen is always vertically scrolling. Instead, you have an open map that you and your dragon explore for targets to destroy. Your dragon is also always flying forward so you can only turn it to do flyby attacks instead of staying still to shoot. Another big thing is being able to fly high or low to be able to take on different targets. Most of the things are on the ground so you'll usually end up flying low which means for the most part you'll be staring at this tiny adorable dragon. It's not very good. Reviewers at the time weren't too keen on it either. Electronic Gaming Monthly didn't like it that much. The highest score one reviewer even gave it was a 6 out of 10. Dragon Strike was developed by Westwood Studios and published by Strategic Simulations Inc., the same developer publisher combo behind the beloved Gold Box SSI Dungeons & Dragons games, such as Pool of Radiance and Champions of Kryn. SSI had already released a game called Dragon Strike in 1990 for the Amiga, but that was a completely different game in that you play as a knight riding on the back of a dragon in first person view, jousting other dragon knights. This game also happens to share the name of a Dungeons and Dragons board game called Dragon Strike. Only this has no dragons in it, but it does have a VHS of live actors goofing around on a green screen to help explain to you the rules of the board game. I've already done a video on this. You should go watch it. Speaking of shoot 'em ups, the Neo Geo also got one released this week with Andro Dunos. Andro Dunos is another horizontal shooter like Gradius or R-Type. Fly around and dodge bullets and blast everything that moves while getting power-ups. Unlike most of the others, Andro Dunos allows you to switch between four different weapon sets on the fly and you can charge the attacks. It also has a two-player mode and the ability to save your game if you have a memory card for your Neo Geo AES. It isn't terribly innovative. Kind of hard to talk about when the game is so straightforward. And while Andro Dunos itself may not be that fascinating, its legacy is. Andro Dunos was made by Visco and publisher SNK for Neo Geo Arcade and home consoles in July of 1992. It never got a port or a re-release or anything like that until 2012. In 2012, independent developer NCI ported Andro Dunos to the Neo Geo CD when they acquired the property rights of the original developer, Visco. This Neo Geo CD version is officially endorsed, and then they were able to port Andro Dunos again, this time to the Sega Dreamcast in September 2021. Because why the hell not? And then there was a sequel made. Andro Dunos 2 was published by Pixel Heart in March of 2022 and can be downloaded on Steam, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. It was also put onto the Dreamcast, and it was also put onto the Nintendo 3DS, which, as far as I can tell, based on my research, this is the final commercial retail 3DS game to ever be made. It's hard to remember, but summer used to be a big drought for new game releases, up until like 2008 or so, so sometimes you just had to take whatever you could get. Case in point, with this week's last game, Jeep Jamboree Off-Road Adventure for the Nintendo Game Boy. Jeep Jamboree is a racing game, only it's oops all Jeeps. Whereas most racing games on Game Boy were either top down or side view, Jeep Jamboree is in first person. This means a wheel in front of you, a small mini map, and playing at about five frames per second. To be fair, it has some things going for it. It was one of the first racing games that allowed you to go off road and have your car be affected by the rough terrain. I say rough terrain, but really it's a sea of gray. It may look okay here, but now imagine trying to play this game on a tiny Game Boy screen that wasn't even lit up, and you can see where some of the issues start to arise. It did have two-player link cable support, so you could play it with a friend. 
or an enemy. It's worth noting that the music was done by famed music composer Tommy Tallarico, whose other works include Earthworm Jim, the video game's live concert tour, and Color a Dinosaur. Jeep Jamboree is barely an average game. Despite this, it initially received praise from GamePro magazine, saying that it would satisfy the handheld roadster crowd. They're wrong though. Jeep Jamboree got a Game Boy re-release in Race Days, where it was combined into a two-in-one cartridge with a previously Japanese-only racing game called Dirty Racing. When that was released in 1994, reviewers finally caught on that they both kind of suck. Upon re-review, GamePro said they both have drab graphics, boring tracks, and annoying sounds. They even harshly stated that it'll disappoint even the most liberal, I'll play anything gamer. Better late than never, I guess. The only other release this week was Pyramids of Ra, an ancient Egyptian-themed puzzler for the Game Boy. That means this week, I counted one NES game, one Neo Geo game, and two Game Boy games. Sega took a break this week. Over in the collector's corner, Dragon Strike for the NES is fairly obscure and rare. The cartridge alone is at about $95 right now, and up to $165 with the box and the manual. And yet, it's only the second most valuable D&D game on the NES. As a Neo Geo game, Andro Dunos is is naturally very pricey. Just Loose will go for nearly $250, while Complete will be over 500 bucks. And Jeep Jamboree for the Game Boy is pretty cheap. It can be purchased loose for the low price of $10 and Complete for a bit over $100. And that's it for today. Next week, we'll be looking at an inexplicably hardcore pinball game, a short-lived cartoon franchise, and uh, a board game? I'm your host, Jared, and this was Now in the 90s. Thank you so much for watching Now in the 90s. Please like the video and comment down below and subscribe if you aren't already. And if you already are a subscriber, thank you so much. I picked up Andro Dunos 2 for the 3DS not knowing anything about it. So I actually learned a lot this week because I had no idea about Andro Dunos for the Neo Geo, let alone the Neo Geo CD or the Dreamcast.